I'm going to give a hand for Mary Carmen. It's true, I am taking medication and normally I'm 85 miles an hour, I'm about 110, so if I go too fast, raise your hand. Uh, anyway, uh, it's been many years we've been involved in the program. Let me see how to work this thing. What do I press? Can we make it a little bit louder? Oh, it does work? Okay, I have to eat it? Okay, all right. Anyway, um, it, we right now we have a collaboration between the Wildflower Seed Bank at UL Lafayette. I'm sure many of you have visited the facility, which is fantastic. Uh, Louisiana Department of Transportation, the Garden Clubs of Louisiana, Master Gardeners, Native Plant Society members, the pollinator groups, other interested parties, and elected officials. You know, it takes a tremendous team and the one thing, uh, it's great that we want something beautiful and we want all these great wildflowers on the roadside, but if you don't work with the guy on the mower and the sprayer, or should I say the lady and the guy on the mower and the sprayer, it ain't gonna happen, as they say. So anyway, uh, just to tell you a little bit of the history of what we've been through, uh, in the beginning in 1984, Beverly Latimer, I don't know if y'all remember her, she mm -hmm. used to head the Lafayette Natural History Museum and Planetarium. We have to give credit to Beverly. Beverly had the very first wildflower meeting in Lafayette statewide. She invited people from all across the state and she had representatives from all over. There were garden clubs, Native society, Native plant society people, uh, interested parties, and uh, she had as many people that she could get in that building to go to that meeting. And believe me, we almost ended with Fifth City by the time the meeting was over because we all had different opinions. You know how that goes? And I, I was a horticulturist and I figured, well, heck, I, you know, I should know how to grow flowers. I realized what I didn't know. And wildflowers on the roadside are not exactly planting in your garden. It's not petunias and pansies. And believe me, when you're on the roadside and the traffic is 75 miles an hour, blowing your clothing almost off your body, you gotta pay attention to what's going on. So you can't just look at the flowers. But anyway, we had a lot of disagreements and uh, it took me a few years to, to wise up, but I've been involved in this for quite some time, as you can tell but I did realize that I really didn't know. It was a lot that I didn't know. Anyway, in the excitement, we did all the plantings. I don't know if you all remember, we did I-10 and I-49. It was a 90-acre plot that we did, and we got money. The parish even put money in it. It was absolutely gorgeous. And the first year, it was spectacular. The second year, the Johnson grass, the itch grass, and all the miserable little creatures that we don't like coming up with the wildflowers started to hide all of the gorgeous flowers. So we realized, and DOTD was ready to hang us at the next tree, because actually Lady Bird Johnson's National Wildflower Research Center had recommended that you disc into the soil three inches. We did that, not a good idea. We turned over all of the old weed seed that had been laying dormant for all those years that DOTD had suppressed, and we brought them back to their glorious splendor. <laughs> Eight billion seeds, I think, came up with that stuff. It was absolutely miserable. So we ended up having to mow. So, but the first year, beautiful. Second year, you could see a few, but then after that, it got to where we had to start controlling them again. Because, again, the grass was way out of control. And again, we had problems. We decided, well, what are we gonna do? Uh, what's the best thing? And of course, we had the argument of native, non-native, and we went back and forth with that. Well, we decided that we were gonna go ahead and do a pilot study. And I don't know, if you'll, for those of you who know Lorraine Bio, she was one of the members. Dr. Woolard was on our committee. We had the Department of Transportation and a number of other people together, and we put together a pilot study uh, someone was going to charge the state 250000 for a windshield observation, and a windshield observation is driving down the road looking at flowers, and I said, I was taking over as president, and I said, I don't want that mark on me, so I said, we're not going to do that. So we fought that 250000 deal, and we did a pilot study, and for less than $25,000, we realized that the state was going to be wasting money doing that, so we didn't we got in there and made a difference. And I will tell you, that gave us a good reputation with a lot of people with the state. It's remarkable, you know, as my mother says, there's a lot more flies with honey. So, you know, it's easy to tell people what to do, but if you're not out there with them, you have no clue of what's going on. So anyway, we did this pilot study and we learned that we need to go native because they're not gonna come back. Most of them don't come back. And then, of course, uh, Lady Bird Johnson had her awards program. I was lucky enough to represent Louisiana there. 
And being there, I learned one thing that was made a great impact on me that I will never forget. I was lucky enough to sit with the man and his wife, the guy who won. She gave $1,500 to the guy who did the best job in conservation of native Louisiana wildflowers, I mean, uh, Texas wildflowers. And I could see how appreciative. I mean, you could see this guy would have gone to the end of the globe for, for Lady Bird because she had thanked him. You know, we all do like to thank you. And it was remarkable. So there's another thing that I learned along the way, all these different things that I didn't realize how much of an impact that would make. So anyway, so then we got Alice Foster on board. I realized Lady Bird with her power and majesty. I said, when she became first uh, lady for Louisiana, I met with her and I asked her, I said, if you don't mind, I would appreciate it if you would help us with the wildflower program. And we were so blessed that she did. And she actually went all over the state helping us to do some plantings across the state. So you need the political people on board as well. And uh, again, like I said, anybody that you can get, that you can get them to work with you, you're gonna get the results. And I'm giving you all of this history because I'm gonna tell you where we are today once I get to the end. But anyway, we needed that supply of native wildflower seed. So what are we going to do? You know, we needed something. Well, I talked to Dr. Durbin Fudell and uh, he, he was writing a grant on the wildflowers, and so I helped him to write the grant, and we went to get enhancement money from DOTD in Baton Rouge. We were blessed that we were the first to ask, so we got the money. And so it was interesting that, of course, it's, as you know, it took uh, quite a few years to make that happen, and I thought first we were gonna do it at, uh, near Ira Nelson, right next to the creamery, and we were gonna do it there. But then they decided to be better at cave form, which was a much better decision because you have a lot of land to grow wildflowers. I, I, think it's, I think it's 60 acres or whatever. It's a lot of acres, whatever. But anyway, so we started seed production at the cave facility. Now we have seed available. When contractors go and do a road move job, they need seed. Where are they going to purchase it? There was none available. We actually work with, the, with one of the contractors because in legislation that was passed nationally, it's a, I forgot what the percent is, but when you do these jobs, but these jobs are millions of dollars, so you'd be surprised how much seed you need to purchase. Well, if it's not available, you can put it out there, but it doesn't come back. Now we finally have the opportunity to do that. Anyway, what we're getting ready to do now is our statewide wildflower plantings are gonna be based on native seed that we produce at the seed bank in Cave. Uh, we're gonna actually we have application forms, your garden clubs, your uh, master gardeners, interested parties, whomever you may be. You have to partner with the Department of Transportation and you will fill out an application form. Those forms are not quite ready yet. I'm meeting with DOT this, this coming Wednesday, and we should have those forms ready to show you what they'll be like. And you're gonna fill them out, and people are gonna have to be dedicated to make that difference, to do these plantings. This is not inner city where you're gonna have to worry about site restrictions. These are gonna be on the parameters, like if you're coming into town on the banks, on the side of the road, but not right where you're gonna take a left or a right, because if you have a site restriction problem, DOTD's first and foremost job is motoring public safety. We're not gonna confuse that issue, we can't. So we have to make sure, because most of the varieties we have right now are very tall. Once we have shorter varieties, we can do inner city plantings because you won't have, it won't impede the traffic. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing it once a year, we'll do plantings. This year we did one in Jennings and we did one in Marksville. And those two plantings will be the first two for this particular project. And we hope to do five to seven to nine, depending on how much seed is produced each year and who applies. We ha I have a committee, a nucleus of people that we're gonna make that, you're gonna mail them in. We're gonna pick who is gonna be the first ones to do those plantings. And each year we're gonna start doing those native plantings in those areas. We're lucky enough that some of the Department of Transportation personnel are so excited about this, they're trying to get McNeese involved, we're hoping to get other universities, if they do any of the pollinator areas, they will be growing large quantities of Coreopsis and things like this. So there's an opportunity to be able to have even more seed to spread. So I think it's exciting. We're finally at a point where we can actually promote the use of native wildflowers, our Louisiana stock. And uh, then once we do that, we will be able to map it out and you will be able to, we're hoping on your maps when you come through the state, of course, that's not tomorrow. I would venture to say that's five to seven years down the line 
that you'll be able to start to see colored areas that it will tell you this is Coriolis tinctoria, this is clasping coneflower, or whatever it may be, showy primrose are in this area. Now, another exciting thing, because we're finally, after all these years of all the things that have happened, besides mapping out these planting areas, this year I was shocked because they never told me I'm driving down I-49 and my DOT guy, who I love him to death, his name is Ron Duyon, and he's a young man with a great attitude, and he, they started doing some overspraying, and the Ruella are coming out. There's a lot on 90 and, and Highway 82 in Vermilion, but on I-49, I could not believe the expanses of Ruella. I call it our uh, Louisiana blue bonnet. Of course, it blooms in the summer, though, so I mean, and uh, hotter temperatures, and it's absolutely gorgeous, so there's a lot of stands out there. Another exciting thing is I want to tell you, too, is there's some um, native prairie areas that DOT is working on helping to conserve those areas with the native plant people. And I think that's great because it means that native plant people who want to conserve the native prairie, which I'd like to do it too, I just don't have enough time to do everything. Uh, but I love to see if we could all come together because guess what, we win. If you can have theirs happening, what we want to see happening and make it all happen, we'd have an opportunity to be able to do it all. But the mandate for DOTD, as I was telling you earlier, is motoring public safety. And we don't have all the answers. It's important that everyone remember, and I can tell you with all the years I've been at this, I still don't know everything. There's no way. Because nature will make a fool out of you in a heartbeat. So you have to be real careful. So anyway, uh, the plantings, if we have a problem that something is tall, we're making the rule that guess what? It's going to get mowed. Someone won't be happy if it gets mowed, but that happens. You can't impede the visibility when you're getting to turning areas you have to be able to see so we can't have a three-foot wildflower blooming in that area and every step is a big step so anybody that's involved we want you to realize that we care what you're doing we want to work with you we want success but we do need the partnership of the Department of Transportation and all of us interested parties and then eventually we want to do recognition programs again at one time I was doing a program uh, but I wasn't able to do it anymore because it was just too much work for one person. But I did do an awards program, kind of like Lady Bird was doing, but I did for more people. And uh, she was just doing one person, and we did each uh, district. And then, of course, we also want to celebrate all of the successes. The questions that I'm throwing, I bring, put this up here so that you would know, is that most people will come to us and say, why don't we have all these gorgeous wildflowers that Texas does? Well, I can tell you, even before Lady Bird got started, they had been working on it for 60 years. So they are well ahead of the game than we are. So Lady Bird did not start that program. She was great, though, to promote it and to push it nationally. I've been to a number of other states, and a lot of other states are doing different things, but I think we finally have an opportunity that we can make a difference. I know uh, we've given talks in Mississippi. They are turn, turning a lot of things around in Mississippi and doing some uh, power line rights away as well, so it's exciting to see what's happening. There's a lot of things that are happening, but it's uh, it's patience, I have to say, quite a bit of patience. Uh, the partnerships are important that we all get involved in it and stick with it, though. You have to stick with it. Once you start going with it and get the plantings going, we can spread. When we got started with our program years ago, we had a DOT guy that was in Chase, Louisiana, that had 70 miles of Coriopsis tinctoria, a wonderful guy that would just mow it and he would let it stick on the mowers and he'd spread it. He did it himself. So there are a lot of DOT personnel out there that really do care and people that will help us make a difference. And of course, um, we want to enhance the ride for the motoring public and eventually reduce mowing costs. That won't happen tomorrow, I can promise you. It'll take a while. But once you have more flowers, you can reduce mowing, co mowing costs. One thing that it was great for Texas, they also had John Thomas with Wild Seed, and he would help to harvest part of the areas and trade. He would give seed back to the state, and he would take some, but he would help to manage some areas. So that helped the state of Texas to be able to make some advancements, and maybe in the future for us, we'll be able to do some manipulation like that. But I will tell you, I've been involved in this a long time, as you can tell, since 84. And I told him, I said, I'm going to die soon. We need to get something going. But anyway, uh, I'm getting old. But just to tell you one thing that stayed with me, and I want to tell you, a lot of people don't understand. Say, oh, it's just a bunch of little flowers. What's the big deal, you know? 
I used to do that television program, as I told you, and one time I'm in the nursery, my mother had a nursery at Orchid Gardens, and I'm standing there and this lady comes up to me, she says, excuse me, she said, are you Mary Corville? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. She says, excuse me, she said, do you mind if I hug you? And I says, no, ma'am, I'm fine with that, you know, but I wasn't too sure what was going on. And so she comes and gives me this bear hug, and I looked at her and I said, excuse me, I said, that was great, but I said, can you tell me why? She says, yes. She says, I'm from the Opelousas area, and she says, on my way in, when I get to I-10 and I-49, she says, and she says, I'm chapped because it says I'm trying to get my husband off the work and the kids off the school and I'm aggravated and I have to go to work. And she said, I hit the wallflowers. And she said, it's just so beautiful. She says, all of a sudden, I'm not chapped at the world anymore, you know? <laughs> so she says, I get to work and my, my boss looking at me and says, what happened to you? Because usually she says, I'm griping all the time. So she says, and I do my work and I said, on the way home, she said, I'm, I'm like, oh God, homework and all this crap, you know, excuse my language, but anyway. She <laughs> says, I, I get it, and she said, I see the wildflowers, and she says, oh my God, she said, it's so gorgeous, you know? And she says, by the time I get home, she says, my husband says, you had a good day at work? And so anyways, she tells me this story. You know, that I, I, I can't remember the lady's name, she told me her name. She says, excuse me, she said, I need to hug you again, and I said, yes ma'am. And I said, but I didn't do it by myself. She said, I don't care, I had to thank someone. <laughs> so you realize the power, the impact, of just these pretty little flowers. The millions, not hundreds and not thousands, we're talking ev eventually millions of people that actually will appreciate what you did. So it goes a long way. So anyway, now I'll open the floor for questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. Uh, how do you work with the Department of Transportation if say you had a particular long cold spring or something like that, their, their mowing times are set or what if the well, I will tell you though, this is the whole deal. The, they have contract mowers, and these people make their living cutting that grass. So I've had to bite my tongue, you know, I mean, I bite my lip, like they say, and like, and like, okay, don't say anything. They really would like to do the right thing. They're not always going to be able to do that. But in the case of the Coriopsis, typically, it, some is going to fall. You're going to have some that's going to come, whether they cut it at the wrong time or not. But if we plant them, then they're going to manipulate that area. Once the areas are intentionally planted, and if an area's not intentionally planted, and the contractor has however many miles he's got to cut, that I can't control. Eventually, we're hoping to be able to get the contractors, the, the mowing contractors on board, but I want to be able to recognize them for what they're doing. And I will tell you, I've had some that have asked to help, we just not there yet. You know, but it's a great question. Does someone else have a question? Yes. Hey. Um, so could you talk a little bit about what species you chose and why you chose them? Well, for lack of uh, any other reason, because we had an abundance of Coriopsis tinctoria and Clasping Coneflower, those are two that we chose, uh, but they're very tall, and we also had access for seed from the guy from Chase. He had an abundance of seed, and we were able to get that from him as well. I have gone to Cameron and we collected the seed of the very short, which are hoping we can use those for some of the inner city, city plantings because they only get like 12 inches tall, that beautiful little golden Coriopsis. So we're working with that one to have an abundance of it, but we're not there yet. We just have more of the coneflower and the tinctoria, and it was only because of abundance. It wasn't because we chose it because it was the latest and the greatest, but we do know it will withstand a damp area as well as a dry area, so that is a good plus for that. Yes. When I was in the class for Master Gardeners, we had a meeting out at Pace, and we were given a little package of wildflower seeds. Can individuals <coughs> purchase those from Pace? Right now, I don't think the university is authorized to sell. You know, I mean, I don't think that's a legal thing. I think they can give some samples, uh, but I don't think that they can sell, and they can't give huge amounts. Right now, with the program, because they've agreed to the program, we're going to be limited on how much we can give. We can give some little packs. But uh, eventually, hopefully, if we're making enough, there's enough area out there that we should be able to have so much seed we wouldn't have to worry about it. But the sale part right now, I think they could sell to a contractor, but not to an individual. You understand what I'm saying? There's some kind of legal deal in there, and I'm not an attorney, so I don't know what the deal is. And you had said that you followed Lady Bird's advice by digging up the dirt, so that's not what you need no. to do. Cardinal sin, don't do it. <laughs> you know, I guess it's best to do some herbicide and get rid of the invasive species and to scarify the soil. Meaning what, what we did is we got what they call a drill seeder and all it does is scarifies the soil and then it has a culture packer that goes back and puts soil to seed contact. You do not want to till the soil because all that miserable stuff comes up. And then, oh, it's a penance. Any other questions? Yes. Do you have a website or a newsletter that we can 
keep up with the science and um, and as it continues to grow? That we can I would love to have that, but we're not there yet. But that's a great idea. Yes, I would like to have that to where we'd be able to just go and you'd be able to click on and pick the spot and see was this planted or what can I look, you know, what you know what's out there. I think that's a wonderful <laughs> idea. Hey, Colette, put that on the list. <laughs> Any other questions? I just have something wonderful. I really remember you, uh, my uh, orphan. My husband took me out to the senior prom 50 years ago okay. <laughs> to pick an orchid. Oh, and come you, on. I guess you made my corsage. I may have. I may have. Yeah. I, may, I have to make y'all laugh. My husband laughed. My husband's here. He's going to laugh about it. You see, I was a cheap date because he didn't have to buy me flowers. <laughs> But anyway, the thing is, but we had all the guys that said they were so, they thought they were so cool from Turlings, because we went to Turlings. They thought they were so cool because they had orchid cassages for the girls, because mom, mom grew all the orchids, you know, just down the way, so. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Okay, thanks.